Hi, I'm Andrew, and I will present you our work on creating guided segmentation of rewarding objects in first-person views. Paper and code implementation you can find at this link. We solved the following problem in this work. How to train the neural network model to segment reward-related objects in first-person view images using only reward signals provided by the environment. That would be an easy task if we had input image and output mask pairs. Instead, the agent receives a reward for successful interaction with some object in the environment. For example, an agent receives a reward every time it destroys a tree trunk block. Below you can see a discounted reward curve and the current time step is indicated by the red pixel. Thus, we have the following setup. For training the Hourglass neural network model, we can use reinforcement learning replay buffer or imitation learning dataset with reward events. Using these two sources of information, images and reward events, we need to train an Hourglass model to segment reward-related objects uh, in input images. This is the result that we can achieve after training an hourglass model using our approach. On the left side you see input images and on the right side you see output masks. In the middle you see overlay of input images and output masks. Our approach consists of two training phases. In phase 1, we train a critic network to predict expected reward value of image observations. In phase 2, we split the dataset into low and high critic value images. This can be an imitation learning dataset or a reinforcement learning replay buffer. We sample a pair of high and low value images and for each pair, we repeat the following two stages. But first, let's take a closer look at phase 1. In phase 1, we train a critic network to predict an expected reward value of an image observation. Examples of image observations you can see on the right side. These are images from imitation learning dataset with reward events. The agent gets a reward for collecting a log that is produced by destroying a tree trunk block. The ending of each curve indicates the reward event in the environment. These curves are discounted reward values from the dataset The lower plot demonstrates expected reward values predicted by a trained critic network from the images above. The red pixels indicate the current time step, and their values are shown here. It is important to mention that the critic network and the encoder part of the hourglass network share the same convolutional layers. The bottleneck has a single pixel spatial resolution and many channels. It also has two output heads. The first head has several fully connected layers and belongs to the critic. The second head is not shown here and goes into the decoder part of the hourglass network. This choice to share the same convolutional layers between encoder part of the hourglass network and the critic network substantially improved the segmentation accuracy of rewarding objects in the environment. Here is the second training phase of our approach. The hourglass network is shown here. It has encoder, bottleneck and decoder parts, as well as skip connections. 
As you can see, the bottleneck has two heads. One belongs to the critic, and second goes to the decoder. Trained hourglass network outputs a mask that represents reward-related objects in the environment. We call it a unit mask because we used a unit type of hourglass networks in this experiment. At the beginning of phase 2, we split the dataset of available images into high value and low value images. The value of images is estimated by critic. Then we sample a pair of high value and low value images. The high value image from this pair we feed through the hourglass network and the hourglass network outputs the mask. We use this mask to mix the given pair of high value and low value images. The idea behind mixing is as follows. We assume that the high value image A contains the rewarding object and the low value image B doesn't contain the rewarding object. Thus, if we cut out the rewarding object from image A and put it into the image B, the value of the resultant image Y will be similar to the value of the image A. Following the same logic, we assume that if we cut out a rewarding object from the high value image A, we will get image X with a lower value and this value will be similar to the value of the original low-value image B. If the assumption that value of image A should be equal to value of image Y and value of image B should be equal to value of image X is correct, then we can form the following two losses. These two losses are aimed at minimizing the value difference between image pairs B and X and A and Y. And following our previous assumptions, the pivotal component to minimize these losses is the mixing mask produced by the hourglass network from the input high value image. So let's take a closer look at how does this mixing mask work with respect to these losses and how do these losses allow to train the hourglass network. For that, let's take a minimal example. Here, symbols in red indicate full-size images A, B and Y. Symbols in green indicate a single pixel value of these images. For example, it can be a top-left pixel in image A, image B, mask, and image Y. Thus, we have that a top-left pixel value of image A is equal to 0 0.2, image B 0 0.6, mask 0 0.5, and image Y 0.4. Now we take the full image A as an input of the critic and critic produces value 0.9. Next we take image Y as an input of the critic and critic produces the value 0.7. In order to minimize this loss, which is also shown here, we need to increase the value of image Y. Let's assume that it requests a higher value of the top left pixel in image Y. The value of that pixel, 0 0.4, we get using the following equation. In this equation, we cannot change the top left pixel in image A or in image B. The only coefficient that we can change is the top left pixel in the mask produced by the hourglass model. In this particular example, in order to increase the value 0 0.4, we need to decrease the value 0 0.5, which is obvious from this equation. 
In this way, the Hourglass network gets training signals how to improve an output mask M for the given image A. Following the same logic, we train the Hourglass network using the second contrastive loss. And last, this loss penalizes any positive value produced by the Hourglass network. This is necessary to avoid a trivial solution. Imagine when the hourglass network produces a completely white mask. Following this equation, we just copy-paste a complete image A into the image Y and a complete image B into the image X, which results into a zero loss for these two contrastive losses. Thus, using these losses, we can train an hourglass network to highlight rewarding objects in first-person views. So, as an outline for the training phase 2, first we split the dataset into low and high critic value images. Then we use the hourglass model to generate a mask for the high critic value image. We merge the high critic value image with low critic value image based on the mask from stage 1. We reduce the critics value of the merged image by training the hourglass model to optimize with gradients the merge mask for the pair of high and low value images. And we repeat this many times. We also conduct a number of additional experiments. Results of some of them you can see here. In the first column you can see input images. In the second column there are ground truth masks of the tree trunks in the environment. We were able to obtain these ground truth masks by substituting a texture pack in the environment, where all tree trunks had a unique color. The output masks of a trained hourglass network are shown here. After we apply a threshold, we get a binary masks, which demonstrate an intersection over union with the ground truth masks on average 0.41. We were able to improve this value by applying a conditional random field technique at every frame. With this technique, we were able to obtain an intersection over union value 0.45. On the right side, you can see our experiments with salience maps. In these experiments, we used only critic network, without hourglass network. Salience map allows to highlight pixels, which have the biggest influence on critic. However, these experiments didn't bring us any useful outcome. The upper row demonstrates masks produced by different techniques. The lower row demonstrates true positive, false negative, false positive and true negative parts of these masks with respect to the ground truth mask. You can find more information about details of these experiments in the paper. Paper and code implementation you can find at this link. Thanks for your attention.